A warm welcome to another edition of Breeding to Win. Following a fantastic sporting weekend last week, the country still on a high with rugby glory. And let's hope that feeling can last a little bit longer for all of us. Right now, let's take a look at what you can look forward to on tonight's show. Fee and the team check in on some ready-to-run gallops at Durbanville and she chats to a few of the vendors putting their charges through their paces. I chat to Colin Gordon about the Gauteng Chris Herber Summer Cup. Fee chats to Eric Sands about the Big Cape Campaigner Rainbow Bridge. Fee also chats to Ken Truter about the up-and-coming Asian Racing Conference and the Western Cape Equine Trust Race Day. And before we go, we look at the fall of the week. The CTS Ready to Run sale takes place on Friday the 22nd of November at Durbanville Racecourse. She catches up with a couple of vendors and chats to them about their drafts. For more information, you can contact one of the CTS team and their numbers are currently on screen. It's an absolutely glorious morning out here at Durbanville Racecourse and we're really looking forward to the Ready to Run sales which takes place towards the end of November and the horses are all preparing and having some grass gallops this morning. We've got lots of vendors here on course and it's really lovely to be seeing these horses going through their paces. And with me is Vianne Smith from CTS who's going to give us a little bit of an update as to how the sales preps are going. Vianne, smashing to be here this morning. Yeah, what a beautiful morning and uh, after all the rain last, uh, last weekend and uh, yeah, great to see the horses out. I can't believe it's less than a month, three weeks away, and then we've got sale time again. Lovely to have lots of vendors here this morning putting their horses through their paces. And what I've seen so far, they're very forward. Very much so. And, uh, you know, considering that and looking at the catalogue, you know, just uh, the, the quality of the pages, it looks a bit like a Cape Premier <laughs> yelling sale catalogue, to be honest. Uh, you know, with a, a number of siblings to grab Group 1 uh, winners and uh, sons and daughters are Group 1 winners, so uh, really excited about what, you, what we're going to present on the on the 22nd. Yeah, you've just handed me my catalogue. I'm looking <laughs> forward to sifting through the pages because I've already spoken to Kerry on the show and I've, I've spoke to you earlier in the year and we spoke about what a good strong catalogue it is. It's really yeah. exciting. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when, initially when I looked just on, from, a, from a sire power perspective and just seeing the sires represented on the sale, that, that alone was already very impressive and, and looking at some of the damn lines um, compared to, you know, or combined with what we're seeing today in terms of our, you know, just the, the, the individuals on, on show, um, I think there's lots to be excited about. Yeah, and a bigger catalogue than the normal. I remember you said to me before that you're hoping that people will get here earlier to view yeah. because there's a little, a few more horses to, to go through. Yeah, we, we're just over 170 horses, so there's a, there's a fair catalogue. We're still going to fit it all into one day. We felt that that, you know, that format would work really well. It uh, created a real buzz with the, with the gallops in the morning and then one last opportunity opportunity to look at them after the gallops before the before the sale in the evening but it's going to be a bumper day and we really yeah you know, we, we're really encouraging people to to get here at least a day before and and spend uh, yeah spend the, the whole of Thursday really looking and, and even even into Wednesday and then uh, gallops on Friday morning and the sale on Friday evening yeah lovely vibe here this morning lovely coffee and lovely bacon and egg bun so it's yep. lots, lots of fun a really lovely vibe and I'm really looking forward to the sale and as I said looking at the horses this morning we've got a lot to look forward to absolutely Citadel have got 40 odd youngsters coming to the ready to run sale at the end of November a few of them have been through their paces this morning and with me is Julia Pilbeam to give us a bit of an update. Julia, morning. Morning, Fee. Looking at your horses going through their paces this morning, they're working along very nicely. You must be happy. Yes, we are very happy. 
Um, there have been some that are more backward than last year's draft. We had a big draft last year as well, but they're really coming along well now and we're very happy. We're three weeks out and on track from what I've seen this morning. Quite nerve-wracking stuff having such a, a big draft. I believe you were here last week to Gallup. You'll be here again next week as well. Yeah, yeah. No, from loading to unloading to being here, it is all it is all nerve-wracking. You, you don't want a horse to get hurt at this stage. Uh, but the horses cope remarkably well. They really do. I know you don't want to single any out because you do like them all as a draft. But obviously, you've got more forward ones. Ones will take a little bit more time still. Yeah, we definitely do. I mean, this morning there's an Abel Tune Colt here that worked exceptionally well. He shouldn't be forward. He worked exceptionally well. Um, there's a coup de grace uh, uh, filly out of um, Natural Woman that really uh, put a you know put a hand up, and a, a Karari filly out of Crystal Clear also worked so much better than she does at home. So I'm very very pleased, and they're going to come on from this. They really, I think, they're, yeah, they're definitely going to come on. Yeah, it's a lovely sale. Always nice horses come out of it, and you and you see what you're getting and and what you've got to work with, which is great. Yeah, you do, you do. And you know, we don't push the horses, we kind of bring them here and, and try and show them the grass and see how much they want to do. Um, so we really try and keep them sound and put as little wear and tear on them as possible. Candice Bass Robinson is also prepping horses for the ready to run sale and she's here galloping this morning. Candice, you've got horses for Beaumont and Justin Verbach. Yes, V, um, you know, we've been doing this for a couple of years now and uh, it's, it's really uh, been a great success for us um, you know we've got some really nice prices for some of our horses that we've managed to buy fairly cheaply um, and I really enjoy doing it it's, it's nice to see the babies come in from um, quite rough and ready from the farm uh, Mel does a great job she breaks them all in and uh, as you saw today they pretty much galloped very well this morning all of them um, we've got a nice bunch um, certainly a bunch that have, have improved a lot since they've come into training um, a couple with some very nice pedigrees all went very well today obviously it's a different story though when you bring them here on sales day and there's tents and things up and they have to gallop on their own they tend to all be a little bit green and run all over the place so that's another whole story but you know they've as I say they've come through the, the preps all of mine very very nicely and um, you know I would expect them to do well yeah and I think that's what we're all looking for is just a nice action they don't want to be doing too much but yours uh, certainly looked really really well this morning and it's quite a strong catalogue now it seems to get strong, stronger every year nice pedigrees I think so you know obviously they've got the sales race that's a nice incentive for people and uh, you know every year we seem to have more and more nice horses coming off here and I mean we've we bought a good couple of horses off here that you know have, have turned out to be really nice horses Majestic Mozart being one of them and um, you know he's turned out to be a really nice horse a horse like um, Jack the Jet Setter which was put through here as well um, he's also he's we bought him at for, for nothing and um, uh, prepped him for the ready to run sale and uh, you know he's he turned out to be a nice horse too so we've had a, a good few that have come through the ready to run that have turned out to be nice horses and again this year I think I've got some got some really nice horses and as I said some really nice nicely bred horses as well which I think makes a difference a couple that are a little bit more backward than others but you know that's that's also fine you know they'll, they'll get to where the others are in a little bit of time but a nice bunch all in all and uh, I think they'll be successful. Trainer Glenn Cotson is prepping a lovely draft for Wehrmark Equine and he's here galloping this morning. Glenn, you thrilled with your draft? They looked to be a pretty nice bunch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they, they really uh, they impressed me today, actually. Well, there were some, some really smart horses there. Justin Mark is um, yeah, selling on behalf of all his clients and he's got some really super pedigrees. I mean, the exciting coup de grace, I think that he's going to be he's going to be on everybody's uh, shortlist. They, they're they very quick and they're nice. I'm just turning to have a look at them. They're coming past now. Yeah, just um, go through the three that are going to gallop past us now. Three of the fillies are on behalf of Jackie, Jollify and, and Gary. Um, but they're beautifully bred. I mean, there's a little coup de gras as well uh, in the middle. He's a chestnut. And the last one is a philanthropist that's very well bred. Um, first one that, that uh, galloped was an oratoria, which is a half brother, a half sister to a group one winner, um, which makes it very exciting. And as you know, um, oratoria is absolutely flying. So uh, he's very nice. Uh, she's very nice. And then the full sister to Duchess of Bourbon, who's a stakes winner with a snaith. Um, she's uh, not the biggest filly, but she's got the most beautiful action. And I think she'll be on everybody's list because because a super pedigree. The second dam is um, the ill-fated stallion um, soft falling rain. So a hell of a pedigree. You know, they've got a small draft of broodmares, but they've you know high quality. And then uh, you know, there's some others. I mean, uh, Justin's Pinocta couple as well. There's a beautiful trippy colt. There's a lovely water winter colt. Give me the green light. Colt, who's got a superb uh, family. I mean, the family's very uh, young. Uh, I think it's driving with Daisy. He ran fourth in the in the Group Two on the weekend. He's half brother to that. There's a lovely Fatura Colt, uh, very exciting Fatura. I think he's a he's a damn nice uh, stallion. I think that um, they all got beautiful actions. It might take a little bit longer, but they, I think they're going to be racehorses. So on the whole, he's got some really smart horses. I hope uh, I can encourage my clients to get involved. What is nice is that uh, they've been fed by everybody else up until now. 
Um, these will come to those cells, I promise you, ready to run. As in, not ready to rest, ready to run. There's nothing wrong with them, they've just been going really easy. But they will also have their starting source certificate, hopefully by the time the cells come. So, um, first baby races are early, the season's been pushed in that they've brought the nursery back, so here's a ticket. Joburg's biggest horse race, the Summer Cup, has recently been renamed the Gauteng Chris Haver Summer Cup, proudly brought to you by Bidvest. It's my pleasure to welcome into the studio colleague and friend of the late Chris Haver, Colin Gordon. Col, lovely to have you back on the Breeding to Win show and in the studio again. Hi Jules, you are lovely to be here. The last time I was here uh, was when I'd actually joined up with the Mutonzuk uh, operation mm. and working for Chris. And it was a wonderful time, obviously, with a very sad ending. Um, mm. But uh, this has just been the most amazing gesture by Lindsay Ralphs and the Bidvest team uh, to come up with the, the Gauteng Chris Gerber Summer Cup. Um, so um, it really it is just the most appropriate race for him to be associated with. We're going to get into all of that now. But I know as a very close friend of Chris's and you're also very close to his family, what does the sponsorship actually mean to them? Well, as I said, it, it's just the most unbelievable gesture. The family, for reasons we'll discuss uh, with you, have a close association with that race because Chris, it was mm. such a happy race for Chris. It was such a happy occasion for Chris. Um, he, he'd won it twice. Um, and then, of course, he proposed to Bridget at the Summer Cup. Um, so it, it, it couldn't be a more appropriate race and then for Bidvest to come forward and name the race the Chris Gerber mm -hmm. Summer Cup, I just think uh, where would you find another sponsor like that? It is un unreal and probably unheard of. So just tell us a little bit how did the sponsorship come about, Cole? Well, um, We'd had the, the approach to the family in terms mm. of uh, Lindsay Ralph wanting to, to do this. Um, 
as I said, just a mark of a man who, who, who thought to um, name a race in honour of Chris. We know Chris was uh, deeply loved by the racing fraternity and all those around him. Um, I know Mike de Kock um, felt that it would be an appropriate tribute mm. to him. And then when you get uh, great racing people around a table, you get great results. You know, a lot of people have a lot of things to say about racing and negatives and, you know, all crooks are in racing and all the likes of mm. that. But, you know, you've also got the most wonderful people in racing. And this is just another example of that. Let's talk about how special this race is actually or was to Chris because he won it, as you mentioned, twice, which for a young owner, and Chris really wasn't a, a young owner in the game, um, was really fantastic. And then obviously also proposing to Bridget um, mm. on Summer Cup Day was also something very special. Yeah, so they won it with Multemi and that uh, had Johnny Gerber, amongst others, uh, involved in the horse. Um, at long odds, uh, I think a master stroke by Alec mm. Laird who snuck in at the weights, which you can do in the Summer Cup and, you know, be the best handicapped horse on the day. And they felt they had a big chance. So not only did they win it, but I think the boys had a few r uh, rand on it. And I remember coming down to congratulate them and we battled to get in the door because the two brothers were fighting each other for the trophy to down down out of it. Um, so it was a raucous occasion. Um, and then they also with Mike de Kock um, won it with Rudra and a different group of owners. And then the famous, as we call it, back to Alcatraz speech um, or proposal, as Bridget would call it, where Chris had made the proposal and then proudly announced on TV to his mates that unfortunately blokes I'm swimming back to Alcatraz. <laughs> so uh, some might call it romantic. Um, but uh, yeah, so he really just had great memories mm. of the... Of the but that uh, was Chris. You know, he had all these little remarks that um, he so fondly remembered by. Yeah, you know, we had his golf day the other mm. day. Um, his brother Johnny has got uh, established a tag foundation, which um, Chris was a huge contributor to, and it put something like 32 um, kids through schools, um, th some through King Edward, some through some of the girls' schools like Parktown, etc. Um, and it's just a wonderful uh, vehicle mm. that they've established. And as I said, Chris was a generous donor to it. And we combined this year the Chris Haber Memorial Golf Day um, and on each of the tea boxes, we had the various criticisms, as Johnny has liked to call them, um, whereby all these sayings that you say that Chris could be remembered mm. by uh, on them. Some we, some we wouldn't be able to repeat, but generally, yeah. with Chris, you knew, you knew what he was thinking, yeah. let's put it that way. Exactly. And I, th I was actually at that golf day, and it was fantastic. And just to see everybody come together for such mm. a great cause and in memory of um, Chris was also, it was such a special day. It was such a special occasion. Yeah, and I, and I think these things like the golf day, like the Chris Gerber, you know, the Gauteng mm. Chris Gerber Summer Cup, uh, those, those kind of things, they can be a sad occasion or they can really be mm. a, a memorable occasion and remember the, the man and remember him fondly. And, and quite frankly, Chris's memorial was exactly like that. It was obviously a very sad time, but um, the, the speeches the, uh, by Bridget, by Johnny, by Bruce Poole, everybody associated with him were, were really of remembering the man and the fond memories we had of him as opposed to a sad mm. occasion. And hopefully the Summer Cup will be exactly like that, a celebration, um, as opposed to any kind of a sad occasion. The other entity I'm leaving out of the, the thank you um, is Pumalela, because obviously for Pumalela it is their race. Um, and for Bidvest and Mike to, to, to bring this all together, uh, hats off to them and we, we're very grateful. I'm sure your family or Chris's family, your friends with Chris's, are going to be enjoying the Summer Cup come the 30th of November? We certainly will do. I think um, one of the consequences of it being named this way is we might need a bigger tent <laughs> um, because the, the golfers were just blown away by Lindsay's gesture. And, um, and certainly that night where we had 450 guests at the TAG Foundation, everybody was just uh, overwhelmed by the gesture. And already that night I was being asked, how do we get a table? How do we come? And, and these are a lot of people 
who aren't in racing or followed racing as a result of Chris Gerber. So um, we certainly hope to have them there and we certainly make, uh, hope to make them long, lifelong fans mm. of racing. I know Chris's name will live on, his memory will live in all our hearts, Carl. So we wish you, we wish his family all the very, very best. And I know the Summer Cup is going to be extremely different this year but it's going to have a lovely touch and a special feeling to it. Yeah, and um, I've said it a few times tonight, but to Bidvest, to Mike, to Pumalela, to all those people involved, to you, Jules, we just are uh, looking so forward to um, remembering Chris the right way. And here comes Fire Away! Fire Away in the Dangers Hour! Last year's Sun Met winner, Rainbow Bridge, hasn't been seen on a racetrack since winning the Grade 1 Champions Cup at Gravel Racecourse last season. Fee catches up with his trainer, Eric Sands, to find out about his plans for the up-and-coming summer season. We're already into the swing of the Cape summer season and the big races are coming up and one horse I'm certainly looking forward to seeing out on the track again is Rainbow Bridge. Of course he won last year's Met and he was a good second in the July and with me is Eric Sands to give us an update. Eric, thanks for taking the time to chat to us today. Uh, yeah, Rainbow, yeah, we're all looking forward to him seeing myself especially I think. Um, I, he went for his break after this um, winter season and uh, I might have brought him back a little bit early. He was there just over a month. But he came so well so quickly that I had to ease off him again. Um, I just didn't want him peaking in November. Um, he's doing well at home. I can't, I can't ask for any more. At this stage he'll probably have his first gallop next week and uh, he'll work from there. Yeah, it was obviously so exciting when he won the Met for you. And then travelling to Durban, obviously it was a little bit of a worry because he, he does get a little bit upset in the parade ring and a little bit highly strung. But he took to the Durban season really well, didn't he? And he settled actually really well. He, he settled a lot better than he normally does. July, not, uh, July they cooked him a bit because they unloaded the horses uh, and, and, and uh, then he was really cooked. That uh, after the July, post-race, straight after the race, he was completely mad. Um, but he settled down and uh, it's that the family, if, you, if the mayor doesn't give you that then I would worry, you know, so uh, we deal with it. Yeah, absolutely, but it was a great run on July day and uh, a really good second, you must have been pleased with that as well. Yeah, the, on the day the best was one between him and do it again, there's never much in between them. Uh, if we do it again has beaten him more than we've beaten do it again, but we'll see when the big race comes again. And as you said, when he came back, he then went out to sit and down at Julia, Julia Bilbooms and he has a lovely time there. I saw a picture of him on social media. He goes out with a little pony and really enjoys life. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a great time. He, he really makes a use of his break. It really makes a difference. They've got to have that break as well, haven't they? Get them out of the racing scene. Definitely. Uh, if I could, I would send every horse twice a year. Just not, uh, you know, sometimes you get them out there. The year before last, I sent fillies out to the farm and I couldn't get them back because there was an African horse sickness outbreak and then I finished up with three months with no fillies. And that's, uh, uh, but uh, it's good, they need it. And uh, he's doing well at home and uh, I'm looking forward to the clash again. And the programme, obviously the sort of same route, they all go the top horses, green points. Uh... Yeah, I would have preferred to have avoided the green point and gone for a, a sprint or a 1400 and um, bring him on for the Queen's Plate in the Met. But that's the way the feature programme has worked out from Johannesburg and uh, we'll, we'll deal with that as it comes. So we have to go green point, Queen's Plate and then the Met. And it's going to be ultra competitive this year because we've got some top horses on the go, haven't we? A lot of top horses from Johannesburg and from here. Yeah, um, it's, it's always competitive, the Met. Uh, last year was competitive, it's going to be a competitive this year. But Moles will be right on the day. And then we all know, obviously, the, the change of ownership and, and Mike Rattray now owns Rainbow Bridge. And uh, he obviously was really, really wanting to win the July, but I'm sure he'll take anything that comes his way. No, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rattray has been uh, great. He's really, uh, be, uh, for him and Mr. Rattray, it's been an absolute pleasure to train for them. He, he listens, he doesn't add 
anything to it and he says you, you'll do your best and I, and I have faith in you and, that. and it's a pleasure to try, train like that. I give him a call once a week, I send him a little video when the horse works well and that and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure so from the support point of view from my owner I couldn't have asked for more. Yeah, and obviously once the Cape season's over, if it all goes well and to plan, will you will you give the July another bash with him? Yeah, we'll judge that when we get down to it. But I mean, if he does do it, there's no point in him staying in here for the winter. If all is fine, he must go to Natal. Yeah, we're well, really looking forward to seeing him on the course. Has he had a grass gallop yet? No, next week we'll play his first one. Well, we're really looking forward to seeing him out and about and on the track again. He's a smashing horse. He's a lively contender for the season. So we're really excited to see him out. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you, Fee. Great to chat to Eric Sands this morning. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing Rainbridge, Rainbow Bridge out again, as with the other top horses we've got to race in the top races this season. The 38th Asian Racing Conference is scheduled to take place from the 18th to the 23rd of February next year at the Cape Town Convention Centre. The Chairman of the National Horse Racing Authority, Ken Truter, tells us more. The Asian Racing Conference is moving into its 38th year in 2020 and Cape Town is lucky enough to be hosting the conference in February and it's very kind of Ken Truter to take the time this morning to chat to us about the conference and let us know what is actually going to be going on in February. Ken, thank you very much for chatting to us today. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure, Fiona, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. Having the Asian Racing Conference here in Cape Town in February is a really, really exciting opportunity for us. It's going to be wonderful. Uh, Absolutely, and I think it's, um, you know, I think the last time South Africa hosted a conference of this nature was in 95, which is quite some time ago, and um, there was quite a bidding process that we had to go through um, to, to actually uh, have it uh, given to us here in South Africa, and I'm pleased to say that we, we got through all of that, and it was awarded to us in, in May 2018. And not only is it a huge conference with some really, really great speakers, I must say, looking at the list, we've got some wonderful speakers. There's a lot of other things revolving around it. We've got a, a race day, we've got a trip to the start, we're showcasing our country, really. We are. It's, I think this is far bigger than just racing. And um, there's a tremendous amount of interest in South Africa. And uh, what I found interesting is people want to come to Cape Town. Uh, I think that's helped us make it a bit of an easier sell. Um, and so we've had a tremendous response uh, as at Tuesday last week. I haven't got the latest figures, but as at Tuesday last week, we, we had almost 350 delegates registered from all over the world. Yeah, that's fantastic. I see you can register on the website as well if you want to get involved. On, on the website, absolutely. But now it starts the 18th of February. Um, it, it was going to be at the convention centre, obviously, at the actual <coughs> conference itself, through to the 23rd of February. But as I said, there's also going to be a trip to Drakenstein Stud. There's going to be a race day will be the Pool Festival. Festival. Um, and then of course other trips around Cape Town. It, it is. It's a, it's a very busy program uh, which kicks off on Tuesday 
uh, when the business uh, program starts uh, running and um, it's followed up on Tuesday night with an opening, uh, opening ceremony at the CTIC with a formal dinner um, supporting bands, acts and a whole lot of South African um, performers uh, giving us that South African feel so we've got some really entertaining things planned including uh, Mango Groove playing there and uh, with Claire Johnson of course and, and other artists, local artists, um, flag uh, waving ceremonies and all sorts of things so I think it's going to be a, a really exciting opening night and I think we're all looking forward to it. Yes Ken, talking of entertainment I've seen there's some, going to be some really top names performing for everybody and the speakers, the, the list of speakers are pretty special but we've got people from government all over the world. Yes, I think you know we've been very fortunate to have the backing of the Asian Racing Federation um, and uh, with the assistance they've helped us to put a business development program together that we believe is relevant, relevant to racing today, racing uh, dealing with issues that all racing jurisdictions around the world have to wrestle with and uh, I think the important thing is as, as, as we discussed is the content of the program after all that's the real reason why we have the conference. Yeah the conference is going to be great, it's going to be a real learning curve for, for many of us in South Africa and wonderful for them to see our way of racing in our country as well. Yes, yeah, I think as we said earlier, this is just a wonderful uh, opportunity to not just showcase South African racing, uh, but at the same time to showcase our country, um, which is most important, especially today. And everyone gets to visit Druckenstein Stud. I mean, that is a beautiful, beautiful stud farm to be visiting. It, it is, and uh, I think uh, we're very fortunate that we have someone like Gaynor Rupert who's always uh, so willing to help and assist the industry, and uh, we, we, we're most grateful to her, and uh, I think that could be one of the highlights of the week. And of course, the, the Porn Festival, the racing meeting that they will get to attend, is also a pretty special one as well. We always get a good attendance, and it's quite a fun and, and, and vibey meeting. Yes, yes. I think the, the racing clubs really, really came together and uh, has supported us here because we wanted to have a special day for the conference. We, we didn't just want an ordinary midweek meeting and uh, so I think they've readjusted their program for, for which we're most thankful and we've now got I think five feature races on the day including the Group 1 Derby which is which is quite exciting. They've repositioned it in the calendar which I think would be interesting to see how that affects the horses and affects the program. It, it might work out very well. So yes, I think it's going to be an awesome day's racing and um, you know, one I'm, I'm sure people are going to really enjoy. I think it's a fabulous opportunity for Cape Town to be hosting this conference. It's going to be a wonderful week, isn't it? It is and if I might just say, you know, it's not just those things. I mean, we've got on the Thursday evening, we've got a cultural evening and the cultural evening is going to be at Kirstenbosch this year at Moya Restaurant and uh, we, we're going to have all sorts of local is good at this function and I think it's one of the most beautiful settings in the world so there's just another example of us being able to to showcase um, you know one of Cape Town's best attractions. Yes what South Africa is all about I see there will be tours to Robin Island they can go up Table Mountain Correct. and of course learn all about our big five. A lot of yes absolutely a lot of the delegates come out with their spouses or their partners um, and while they're at the conference, the wives have got a real choice of things to do, as you say, whether it's Robin Island going up the mountain, doing a Winelands tour, uh, they'll be doing that. And uh, what I found most interesting is that uh, a lot of the delegates have booked to come out earlier or stay later and um, so they'll be moving on to game farms and other attractions around South Africa which I think is wonderful from a South African point of view. Yeah absolutely fantastic I'm really looking forward to and a lot to be learnt as I said for us and, and for them it's going to be an absolutely fabulous week and <coughs> you said already there's numbers are up already and people can get interested still and, and sign up on the website. Yeah absolutely you know we, we're hoping to get as many as 550 600 delegates and uh, as I say we're more than halfway there so it's been a it's been a fantastic fantastic start but certainly tickets are available people just have to access the site and um, th there's not a problem. Yeah I can't wait we're very very lucky to be hosting the event and uh, well I've got you here the Western Cape Equine Trust race day which you're heavily involved in the in the trust it's a wonderful wonderful day and obviously for a very very good cause and that's happening again on November the 30th. That's correct yes that's correct and we uh, we're well advanced with our planning um, it's been a little tougher this year because we all know the economy is not what it should be but fortunately we have some stalwart people who 
who always uh, place us first and they've come to the party so we've got almost all the races sponsored we've got the luncheon organized and a whole host of prizes and raffle prizes so uh, very pleased with the way things have progressed yeah it's a really good fun day and obviously for a very good cause and I love seeing all your horses that have come off the racetrack and they're doing so well in their, in their new lives whether it be show jumping dressage or just uh, somebody enjoying riding them it's lovely to see yeah well I think it's a big thing you know there are a lot of horses that come off the racetrack and what the Western Cape Equine Trust does is give those horses a, a second opportunity as we like to say be it as a riding horse and uh, just a horse a riding horse in the paddock whatever but uh, we try and we find a second home for the horse and another chance for the horse and I think that's very important and especially as I said earlier in today's economy um, you know a big question the racing industry worldwide not just here in South Africa and it will be one of the topics that will be uh, on our business development program in the conference is what happens to to horses once they are finished with their race career. Yeah, I think it's some, something everyone's always very concerned about. So it's a wonderful race day and people can still get involved with that. Uh, get your tickets on Web Ticket. Yes, it's on Web Ticket and it's uh, 495, which includes a three course luncheon and lots of other festi festivities. And they're worth every bit and for a very, very good course. Ken, thank you very much for chatting to us. I look forward to seeing you at your race day at the end of November. And of course, we look forward to the conference in February. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for you. Really, really looking forward to the Asian Racing Conference in February. It's a fantastic fantastic opportunity for Cape Town for us to show off our country and our wonderful racing here and for us to learn a lot from them as well. Something to really look forward to in the new year. to take a look at the fall of the week. That's a wrap for this week's edition of Breeding to Win. Thanks to Fiona Ramsden, to Grant Knowles and the rest of the Breeding to Win team. Until next time, good night.